Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Ashia and today I want to discuss about corticine. And the reason I'm making this video is because of my brother, because he has a podcast, which I will link to this podcast in the description. But at the same time, he's a big fan of Joe Rogan. And apparently two weeks ago, Joe Rogan interviewed Dr. Gordon. And in that uh, interview, Dr. Gordon recommended of taking uh, up to 1000 milligram of the corticine a day as a protective protocol against the coronavirus infection, which apparently Joe Rogan immediately bought it from the Amazon. So anyway, I've been studying about this for the past two weeks. So I end up with some agreement and disagreement with Dr. Gordon, especially when we talk about the preventive protocol. I think we better put the minimum and the best things that are really effective. That has been said, I will tag Joe Rogan in this video. If they want to add up anything to this video, I'm very open to it. This is a debate. This is a scientific debate. Nobody is totally right. Nobody is totally wrong. So if you want to know more about corticine, you should follow me to this. So if you're going to put someone on sort of a preventative protocol for, mm -hmm. for COVID, you would recommend quercetin and you can get it. We just, I just bought some on right. Amazon after you brought it up because yeah. I wasn't taking quercetin. What is quercetin? Quercetin basically is a plant pigment and it's widely found inside vegetable, fruit, as well as green tea. And you wonder if I say honey, yes, by taking natural honey as well as green tea, you can get good amount of quercetin plus zinc and so many other compounds that have an antiviral and antibacterial activity. So what cortisone is good for? Basically from all the study that I read till now, it has 100% approved that cortisone has an anti-inflammatory activity. So if you have asthma or you have any type of allergy, it is good for you to have a study on cortisone and see if it's good for you and it's working for you. But keep that in mind. When we take cortisone as a tablet and supplement, amount that our bodies uh, absorb it is much less than when we take it naturally. For example, beetroot has a very little amount of cortisone inside, but in the study they found out cortisone from, for example, beetroot can absorb through body much better because apparently with cortisone is uh, mixed with other nutrition, especially vitamin C, the level of its absorption is much higher compared to the pills and uh, supplements. So, before I discuss about my disagreement with Dr. Gordon, I want to little bit explain to you how you should do your research regarding the supplement. For example, I believe Joe Rogan heard about the very famous doctor, Dr. Gordon, that uh, cortisone is a very interesting and very important supplement for fighting coronavirus. So he immediately went to the Google search and, and wrote cortisone effect on immune system. So when you do that, you can get thousand different topics in all of them it mentioned it may help your immune system. So you do one very fast forward uh, reading and you think, okay, it, it may help. So you immediately go and buy it from Amazon or wherever else you like to buy. But the problem is in most of this research, they done on cell culture and animal. And for your information, cell culture and animal not necessarily work the same in the human. So these research are only have a scientific value, not necessarily is beneficial for us. So. To rest my case regarding my disagreement with Dr. Gordon, I found a good research on the human trial and human response to the cortisone, which I will explain through this video. But before that, as most of you may fall asleep or don't have a time to go through the whole video, I explain to you in a very short term that does cortisone prevent us from getting coronavirus infection? No, it doesn't. It cannot help us to boost up our immune system as well as it doesn't work for preventing getting coronavirus infection. So what is my protective protocol for coronavirus? What should we do? In my opinion, the best thing is you taking good amount of green tea. At least two times a day, you take good high dosage of the green tea. And the reason for that is you get cortisone, so, so you get the anti-inflammatory activity and benefit from the cortisone. At the same time, there is another compound inside the green tea, which is really antiviral compound. And it has been proved by testing on human in many human trial. It helped us to prevent getting flu viruses as well as common cold and so many other things. And that compound is epigallocotechin trigallate. With Dr. Gordon also mentioned about it, but he didn't put it inside the preventive protocol. So in my protective protocol, you should take good amount of green tea, 50 to 30 milligram of zinc, 1000 unit of vitamin D, as well as 1500 milligram of vitamin C. And please remember, vitamin C is very important and you must divide it to the three different dosage. Means three 500 milligram through the day. 
I made a video regarding this. I will leave the link in the description if you want to know more about vitamin C. But always keep that in mind. Vitamin C and vitamin D always work hand to hand. You must have vitamin D inside your system. And then with vitamin C, they help you to produce antibody faster. Your white cell can get mature and get ready to fight a virus faster, which I made video regarding all of this. And I, uh, and I will leave the link to all of this video in the description. So basically, with this simple protocol, you have a better chance to fight coronavirus infection, flu infection, cold infection. But cortisone has no place in this. So now, if you're still interested to know more about my disagreement with Dr. Gordon, I, f I continue this video. Please listen to what he said. Here. So you've got zinc, 15 to 30 milligrams Correct. twice a day. Quercetin, 500 milligrams twice a day. That's preventive. Treatment, and we've had to treat patients outside of our practice, is 1,000 milligrams twice a day with 30 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams twice a day of quercetin and 30 milligrams twice a day of zinc. And this is for someone that has COVID? That's someone who's active. And what is, what's going on with zinc and quercetin and, and COVID? Like how, how, oh, is, how is it interacting? Yeah. Well, the virus that gets into our cells. It gets into our cells through something called an ACE2 receptor, and that's what the um, vaccine is fighting against. They call it the spike protein. So on the outer membrane of the virus are these spikes. So it uses our own system to transport the virus into the cell. Once it's in the cell, the virus releases something called replicase. Replicase is a DNA reverse transcriptase protein that takes over our manufacturing at the ribosome to make more viral genome. Well, it turns out that the uh, replicase has an area on it that if zinc attaches to it, shuts it off. So quercetin is called an inophore. It carries charged particles into the cell. Otherwise, zinc sits outside the cell. So zinc without a xenophore, is that a saying? Inophore. Inophore? Io, yeah, zinc inophore. without an inophore, it just it doesn't work. Correct. Interesting. It, so a lot of these people, they're just taking zinc on its own. It doesn't, it doesn't get into the cell, right? It doesn't go into the uh, cell. Yeah, generally speaking, it won't get into the cell at a high rate. It will, over time, get in because we have things that we take in, like uh, bismuth in our system from fruits and vegetables. We have uh, EGCG from green tea if people are drinking green tea. Um, we've got uh, curcumin from food. That's why in India they don't get it. So they're getting some form of an inophore. But if you want to really jam the zinc into the cell. Yes. He talked about that cortisone helps the zinc absorption through the cell and because zinc inside the cell prevent the RNA of the virus to replicate, therefore it prevents the infection of the virus. And also he mentioned that the turmeric also have the same activity. That's why in India so many people doesn't get coronavirus infection, which totally is not goes with the reality. This last statement totally is out of reality because this morning I checked and there is more than 10 million people who already confirmed getting coronavirus in India and more than 150,000 deaths are already recorded. And please keep that in mind. These are the ones who done the PCR test and I'm sure the real amount is two to three times more than the more than this number. So basically turmeric is out of the picture. So what about the cortisine and its effect on the absorption of the zinc? So there is a very, as I said, there's a very interesting uh, human trial on the effect of the cortisine. In this trial, they get volunteer female and male, it's separated to the two group and they gave cortisine at 500 milligram and then they raised it up to 1000 milligram. At the same time, they put placebo, blind placebo in both group. So that at the end, they compare those who taking cortisine with those who not and get the result. So basically, at the 500 milligram, male and female didn't show any improvement regarding preventing getting flu infection or cold infection, as well as immune system uh, boosting up. Then they raised up to 1000 milligram. At 1000 milligram, the study become more interesting because the female still didn't show any kind of improvement regarding fighting flu infection, cold infection, as well as the immune system uh, activity. The female who get 1000 milligram of cortisone was similar to those who didn't take. So the number was equal. But then in the male group, there was a slight improvement of those who take up to 1000 milligrams of cortisone a day. They showed a little bit more resistant towards the flu infection and a cold infection. So now you may say, huh, so cortisone has an effect. No, it was not cortisone. Again, I refer you to another interesting research. Cortisone helped the male to produce more testosterone. That is secondary effect of the cortisone. Testosterone has a direct effect on improvement of the immune system. Therefore, because of more testosterone, this, uh, this male group has slightly better uh, tolerance towards a flu infection and a cold infection. So that was the reason. So if what Dr. Gordon said regarding the help of cortisone for preventing viral infection was correct, then in the study, the number of the female and male 
get prevented from getting uh, flu infection by taking cortisone should have been quite equal but the answer is no and in my suggestion if you want to improve your uh, testosterone level there are much more better plants for example tonga ali as well as maca and also ginseng which you can take to help your system to produce more efficient amount of the testosterone not cortisone you can take your cortisone as i said from the green tea beetroot honey and you don't need to go for the supplement so my next disagreement with dr gordon need another video and, and that's regarding the vitamin d because as you can hear what he says on to d3 um i'm taking 5,000 IU a day what do you, what do you I, I personally take a little bit more than that how much you take 50,000 jesus christ mondays and 10 or 20,000 on every other day yes the amount that he talk about the vitamin d is extraordinarily high if you want to know more that i'm gonna make a video regarding that so please don't miss it about how much vitamin d you should take but i myself following very good research that done in uk up to 1000 unit of the vitamin d is already do the trick and it help you to have a good immunity so if you want to raise it up i don't recommend you to raise it more than 2000 unit a day because it can be toxic to you so the last disagreement with him is the vitamin c uh what about vitamin c uh vitamin c helps with the immune system um how much do you take i don't take uh vitamin c really no what do you take i have two or three pieces of citrus fruit that i grow in my backyard oh. uh every morning every now and then uh allison will bring in some of the uh from here it's called strawberry texas uh grapefruits phenomenal sweet as can be he mentioned he take his vitamin c from the grapefruit and fruit and stuff again based on my research vitamin c especially in this kind of situation that we that, that we are vulnerable to the very crazy virus out there must be at a certain level in your bloodstream to have that limit of vitamin c inside your bloodstream i really recommend you you separate your dosage between three to four times and each time you take 250 milligram to 500 milligram of vitamin c during the day and if you want to take your vitamin c to reach that amount to reach that level from the natural source for example he taking grapefruit you may need to get 2 kg of the grapefruit every day and that will already come with uh, diarrhea and so many other problems so in general these are my disagreement with dr gordon uh, and uh, i as i said i will tag uh, joe rogan in this if they want to add anything to this i'm very open to it i'll be very happy and we can discuss more about it and i hope this video was interesting for you if it was please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends until next time and vitamin d video please stay safe out there